number of U.S. home sales plunges to lowest level since 2012. Number of U.S. home plunges to lowest level since 2012. Um, so number of homes available for sale in units on May of 2009 fell by 7.1%. Previous year, the first annual decline since April of 2022, reducing availability to its lowest level since 2012, Redfin, which reported the data states nearly every homeowner with a mortgage has an interest rate below 6%, meaning many are opting to stay put because selling and buying a new home uh, would mean taking on a higher monthly mortgage payment. Housing affordability continues to be a major concern with the median price of an existing single family home rising from $300,000 in 2020 to $393,000 in April of 2023. This has caused the mortgage payment as a percentage of increase to jump 14.7% to 26%. Let me read that one more time. This has caused the mortgage payment as a percentage of income to jump from 14.7% of your income to 26% of your income, which by the way, that's always what I go to when these realtors and mortgage offices are like, well, let me tell you, you know, the home prices are this. And no, affordability is something you have to be thinking about. And, and Tom, the guy that gave us a report at the Elite Mastermind that we had, the report that he gave Vinny, in 2021, realtors in California, brokers, realtors in California, made $18 billion in commissions in 2021. Hmm. $18 billion. $18 billion in commissions. Jeez. That dropped to $9 billion the following year. Okay, $9 billion of the following years, how much commission they've made, which means there's not a lot of inventory to sell. The prices may be held up, but there's not enough inventory to sell. Tom, when you see the story, what do you think about? Well, what I think about is on its face, that's exactly what we're seeing. And what this gentleman pointed out and some information out that I was digging in, um, you know, a year ago, I thought interest rates could get to 10%. I remember I said it on this podcast. They, they got up to 7 7 7.5%, and they've, they've kind of mellowed a little bit. But it's a sustained. It's not just a spike. It's not coming back down. And that interest rate is exactly what is driving this, that if, if I was to sell, let's say I had to move from Nashville, and I had to move to, you know, uh, Plantation. Um, I look at it and say, well, if I sell my house in Nashville and then buy a house in Plantation, you know, 7% interest rates, I'm screwed. So you know what people are doing? I will lease the house with this 3% um, interest rate in Nashville. And I'm just going to go lease a house in South Florida because I probably, even if I sold in Nashville, I probably wouldn't be able to afford to buy the house. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is the supply is stuck. This is called the stuck supply problem where people, even if their job forces them to move their Airbnb or they're keeping their house in the previous market because there's a low interest rate and they want to preserve that interest rate. By the way, it's also got property tax based on the purchase value way back when. And if they bought that house in Florida, they're going to be buying at a higher purchase price. So their property tax is going to be up in addition to the um, actual payment. So we have a supply problem that is keeping prices high and the high mortgage rates is causing the supply to be low because no one wants to sell their houses. I'll flip it for you, Pat. Can we go to San Francisco go for a split for second? Yeah. Home prices are down 17% in San Francisco. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because supply is coming up. Why is supply coming up? Because people are leaving. And why are people leaving? Mm -hmm. Because of the jobs in the city and the policies in San Francisco. So when you have intervening factors in San Francisco that are causing people to actually say, you know what, I am selling and I am leaving, the supply comes up. And the prices come down despite the mortgages. Let's just stop it right there for a second because what he brought up was San Francisco, okay? And what he said was is that prices have plunged, you know, 17% in San Francisco. And they said from the beginning of the video here that they're getting their information from Redfin. So let's just dive right over to the Redfin data here in San Francisco. So this is right off Redfin's site, and this is the median sales price uh, in San Francisco, California, right? And so we started out the year, uh, the median sales price was 1.312 million, okay? Uh, 1.3 million. And right now we stand at 1.5 million. So we're up right now uh, over $200,000 when it comes to 
the median home price in San Francisco. We're up 200000 from January 1st on the median home price. And it does have the year-over-year year, uh, median home price down 4%. Uh, let, me, let me pull that up so you can see. Boom. So the median home price right here is down 4% year-over-year. But we're up 200,000 from uh, January 1, and the bottom was 1.27 million. So we're up even, you know, 250 thousand dollars on the median home price. And and you see, if this trend continues here, we'll get into this. Uh, we'll be in the same. We'll be in the same range as we were the last two years here. We may even go to a new all-time high. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, what they also said was that there was more inventory. So let's just go over here to new listings. Not new listings. This is active listings. These are listings that are actively for sale in San Francisco. Okay. And you can see right here, he said that we're up. Okay. Supply in San Francisco is up. Right. However, we're down. It shows right here. This, this is Redfin, guys. Okay. This is the site that they were talking about. This is where the data is coming from. Okay, right here, we've got active listings in San Francisco, bam, and it shows right here that we're down 19.4%. Okay, we're down 19.4%. So my question is, what is going on here? If you're telling us that prices are down 17%, but actually inventory is down 19%, you're telling us inventory is up. And you're telling us prices are down when prices are up over 200000 on the median price in San Francisco just this year alone. Yeah, we're down 4% year over year, but you said we're down price-wise 17% in San Francisco. It's crazy, guys. This, this is, this is, a, this is a, a, a publication here. This is a, a media outlet OK, uh, the Patrick Bet David podcast that is watched by millions and millions of people. And um, it just it, it, it's, it's wild to me how these numbers get thrown out there. And this is part of the problem um, in, in, in terms of just data getting thrown out there and people getting the wrong impression of what's happening in the market. I'm not saying the market's good or bad. Um, Patrick talked about affordability. And by the way, I actually went to Patrick's office confronted him about the real estate market. It was an hour-long conversation. I'll link that in the description here if you haven't seen it. Face-to-face -face interview about this exact subject. But nevertheless, he talked about affordability. And so what affordability is doing right this second is getting right back to the 1990s and early 2000s levels of affordability. When you take the mortgage payment, today's mortgage payment, and adjust it for inflation, and then you also look at the percentage of household income that goes towards mortgages, you'll see that we were absolutely spoiled over the last decade and a half. It's tougher now, yes, but it's the same as it was in the 90s and early 2000s. Now, where we go from here, I don't know because prices are continuing to escalate. And that's why I think prices are going to slow down from escalating so much because of the affordability issue. We can't get to where we're paying half of our our median uh, household income towards mortgages. We can't get to where, you know, affordability is historically high. That's not going to work. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer and closer as prices continue to go up. We're also sitting on over 7% mortgage rates uh, again. And that, you know, they were down in the, the mid sixes for a while. Now we're back to the seven range. So we'll see how all this plays out. But if you heard the gentleman there, Tom, I believe is his name. He said that he was he was predicting for mortgage rates to go to ten percent and even higher. And I remember Patrick put out a, a tweet last year that said we're looking at ten to twelve mortgage rates, guys. Sorry, we're going to see it uh, happen. It's going to be a two thousand eight market crash. So anyway, I just I had to do this video because when I watched this video, hoping for real data here, I didn't get it. I got that San Francisco prices are down and that supply and inventory is up. But that's not the case when I go exactly to the source that they say they're looking at. So if you guys would please explain this to me, what they're looking at. I saw the little insert of, of something that they were reading there. Couldn't really make heads or tails of it, where it came from, what it was, what it was really trying to say. But I can tell you this, 
According to the Redfin data, what that gentleman just said was absolutely wrong. So anyway, what I want you to do is I want you to go out there and find your, your lane in this market. There is a lane in this market for you to go out there and crush it. If you're going to sit around and cry and complain like everybody else, like most everybody else, about how hard this market is, if you're A, trying to buy a house, if B, you're trying to be a real estate agent, if C, you're trying to be an investor, how hard this market really is, then you're not the champion that you thought you were. Real champions, they rise in moments like this. They find their lane and they absolutely crush it. And they don't listen to what everybody else is saying because they don't want to be like everybody else. They want to be above everybody else. Okay, that's a true champion. What am I doing right now? I'm sitting being really patient for multifamily deals to come through. We're looking at deals every single day. But in the meantime, I'm buying new construction homes. Right. That's a lane that I found. Why is that a lane for me? Because down here in Alabama, I can get a house for three to three fifty brand new. D.R. Horton's going to give me a great rate on an investor loan. Five point nine percent. They're going to pay five thousand a closing cost and I can cash flow incredible cash flow on these homes. I'm buying five of them right this second just because I'm bored waiting on some big multifamily deals to come through. I'm not going to sit around and say the market is horrible. The market is hard. The market is tough. No, I'm looking out three to five years down the road to 10 years to 20 years down the road. It's not hard to see what's going to happen. So anyway, I hope that when you hear stuff like what we saw in this video and you see headlines that you're going and doing your own research, guys, go and do your own research. If in fact you're worried about the market or you want to keep up with the market, Go and do your own research. But know at the end of the day, the closings are going to happen every single day forever. All right. People are always going to want to and need to buy and sell. And I saw a video of uh, it was in Canada in 1981. Rates were uh, 18 to 20 percent. They came down to 15 percent and it was like a frenzy of buyers. And guess what? Those buyers, they interviewed a few of them. And they said, you know what? We can't do anything about rates. We need a house. If you need a house, if you want a house, you can't do anything about the rates. You're going to have to just live with it. And guess what? They slowly became more uh, accustomed to the higher rate environment. That's what we're seeing. We're going to see buyers become more accustomed to the fact that they can't do anything about it. The longer they wait, the longer they wait, the, the rates just aren't going to drop. And neither are prices. And so it comes to a point where it's like, all right, well, We've waited long enough. How long are we going to wait? We got to do something at some point. We can't do anything about it. Let's go out here and do something. And that's what we're going to see moving forward. It's going to be a slow process. Supply and demand will work itself out. It's going to take years to do so, um, but it is going to happen, guys. So when you're when you're on the top, you never think it's, it's going to come down. When you're at the bottom, you never think we're going to get back on top. But this is just the normal market cycle. So take advantage of it. Don't complain about it. Get in there. Get your hands dirty. Get to work. Look at this on a long-term point of view. And you're going to be just fine. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And we'll see you on the next video. Let's go. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss. But it costs and these lanes ain't